Good evening, friends, and welcome back to the business masterclass that we host every Tuesdays and Fridays now. After a continuous run of over, I think, 34, 35 days, uh, it wasn't tiring actually, because all this time we were looking at a lot of possibilities. How is it that we can um, support all of you in doing what you need to do at this point in time to revive your business, to reinvigorate it, to look after all the possibilities that are happening with your workers, with your partners, with your suppliers, the entire supply chain and so on and so forth. Well, one of the initiatives that we worked with Unido on is something called business, building back business from crisis, specifically for MSMEs. And this initiative was launched by Sri Suresh Prabhu um, on the 30th of April. And it's a work in progress. And it's something that, that every entrepreneur will need going forward. So we, I would like to introduce my friend, Rene Van Berkel. Dr. Rene Van Berkel primarily is a representative at the United Nations Industrial Development Organization for the regional office in India. He also looks after the whole of South Asia, actually. He was before this, the chief of uh, cleaner and sustainable production and was responsible for Unido's contribution to the global resource efficient and cleaner production. If you look at his uh, contribution to the RCEP program, that itself has some 50 emerging and developing countries and supports the organization's green industry initiative. He has been the professor of cleaner technology, cleaner production at the Goring University of Technology in Perth. And he has held various positions in the University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. That's where he hails from. He's an environmental scientist by education and has various degrees to his credit. He has worked at the interface of this academia, the government, the industry, and his major focus has been green industry, eco-friendly technologies, industrial practices, and so on and so forth. So we have a very, very important guest today. Welcome, Rene. Thank you very much. Thank you for the uh, the introduction. And uh, I feel really, really honored if you put it all together there. It's uh, quite some work indeed uh, that I've worked on. Uh, and uh, I all, all always like to say I've, I've been uh, in India for, for three years now in this position, but I've been coming back and forth to India over the last 25 years. So I feel also uh, very much connected to India. So um, I would uh, probably uh, start with uh, maybe introducing this uh, B3C, Building Back Business from Crisis in MSMEs, which we do together with uh, Vinod with the India SME Forum. Uh, so maybe as a, as, a, as a one slide introduction, I want to, to tell something about UNIDO. So UNIDO is the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. So we are in the UN system, the specialized agency that helps countries to move towards inclusive and sustainable industrial development. So we are at the same level as the ILO as a specialized agency or the World Health Organization or so. Uh, and uh, in India, our primary counterpart is the uh, Department for Promotion of Industry and in, uh, Internal Trade, DPIIT. And then we have uh, basically uh, in our country program four main pillars uh, where we work on. And the first one is productive and resilient MSME. So working on the MSME ecosystem, on the skilled workforce and technology and quality management related areas. We have a second pillar which deals mostly with climate, resource and environment. So that is helping also a lot of work with MSMEs on energy efficiency and in the, in the, cement, in the cement sector, in the, uh, the ceramic sectors and food processing sectors. And then we have a third pillar, which is more on the uh, creating a value for the communities with business. So that's inclusive and responsible value chains and business and then strategic policy for industrial transformation more at the policy space. So I will not talk too much about it. I just want to manage, mention then our COVID response so far. Under the environment pillar, we have quite some work ongoing with biomedical waste management and we've also been looking at how we can help the supply of uh, PPEs but also on the supply of uh, biomedical waste management services because with all the PPEs and all the, the COVID cases that we're managing with we generate quite a lot of uh, infectious waste and we want to prevent that becoming the next uh, source of spreading it but then under the MSME portal we have then building back business from uh, crisis B3C. 
So we did a little bit of a stock take about a month ago. So that was towards the end of uh, stock day, uh, lockdown one. And I, I think we spoke to 85 MSMEs in uh, different clusters from uh, from Coimbatore to uh, Jorhat and to uh, uh, Gujarat, some clusters. So uh, uh, nothing representative, but really good in terms of getting a sense there. And uh, uh, manufacturing had really come to a standstill in MSME sector. Yeah, and, and there were basically a few areas that were highlighted there. So everybody first comes a question is are we we don't have the cash and that is that is one part of it but if you dig a little bit deeper there are some other constraints which are, of course also add to the cash flow uh, flow crunch so first of all there's there's basically unprecedented uncertainty nobody had expected this to happen and we don't know where this is going to go in india or globally and we we are we are a, a little bit at a loss where is our next bacon to go then number two here is they basically plummet the demand. So from from overnight, many sectors saw complete stop of the uh, of business. So Maruti reported last month zero sales. So that is very telling. That's from from quite a big number to a zero immediately. Then that's number three. We see that a manpower changeover that I also not immediately expected, but really large numbers of people have now moved back to uh, the migrate reverse migrated. Then the fourth concern is that. Uh, 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 stocks have been lying at, idle for now uh, close to six, seven weeks. Machinery has been standing idle. How can we restart? And uh, unfortunately, we have in the last 48 hours seen that uh, there is some risks involved in this and that it has already gone miss, uh, wrong in the, at, the, at the cost of life. So this is also a real concern. And then, of course, also the disrupted supply chain. So. In, the, in this, in a, in a summary, we would say that yeah, we, we need to talk about the stimulus because there is a, a lack of cash in the system, but we need to look that we can also address the other things. Otherwise, it will be uh, throwing money and in, in, in a bottomless pit, so yes. to speak, uh, pro, uh, 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 <laughs> proverbially, and that that is not what we want. So that is why we came up with this uh, uh, building back business from MSME. So our focus is the MSME sector. We say that this is a crisis and it's not just a pandemic, but it's also much more the lockdown and the movement and aggregation restrictions that are necessary, which of course have been caused by the pandemic. And then it's building back. So the restart is much more than just flipping the switch uh, to switch on the air conditioning or the light, that is not possible. And we also think that we can't wait till post. We are, see everywhere post COVID, post lockdown, that we need to work our way out of the crisis. Very uh, so with, with that, we, with that, we started this uh, B3 uh, initiative. I will try to show you the introduction video from here. If I just need to change and up news. Uh, Yeah. Is this visible? Yes. Yes. Okay. We can't hear it, uh, Brené. Can you hear it now? No, we can't hear it. Um, okay, sorry. then I uh, stop uh, this chair and I go back to the screen. Um, I need to kill this one. Just one. Uh, so, so we created this uh, portal online uh, to uh, for business uh, building back business from crisis. And I think that uh, um, if I continue, but now I'm I am locked. I am having some problem. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, we, you know, uh, friends. You know, this entire initiative that Rene is ba basically talking about is all about what is it that an entrepreneur can do in the current circumstances, not just for the current circumstances, but also for the future, how to uh, enable your business again. I think we're back, isn't it? Yes. Yes, sorry for that. So I think then uh, uh, it's a knowledge and collaboration platform where, in which we try to 
provide a framework for action. And we also want to say, let's not build back to where we were at the beginning of the year, but let's see whether we can build back better. So look at an opportunity that we can improve our business as well, and that we then also can contribute to, to some of the other challenges which India faces in terms of inclusiveness and sustainable development. So it is built around uh, this. The system is a, a, a series of tutorials, which are online videos, which are addressing the topics. And then there's a knowledge base with fact sheets and, and, and related ones. And then there are uh, the, the delivery webinars like we're just doing right now. And once uh, the restrictions will get less tight, we will also be able to apply it in, in, in MSMEs, or we need to find a way that we do online clinics on this. But that is clearly uh, what we want to do, a mechanism to be very hands-on to enterprises. And we do this in partners with India M M SMA Forum and with Empotech, which is an UNCTA program of entrepreneurship development. So we have, a, a, as the main elements of basically a bi back to business roadmap. So we say that don't, don't just run and start doing everything. Start with uh, some plan, then prepare your workplace, then uh, start with critical activities to recover your business, then look for opportunities to drive for growth, and then ultimately also look at future proofing. So how, what can we do in terms of business continuity? So if, we, if, I, if you allow me, I will run quickly through these five elements. So first one is plan to recover. So that is the, basically defining the opportunities for your, for your business in a changed health society and business scenario and work out an action plan for uh, capturing these opportunities. And then we say that basically we are uh, at, at this, a situation that we want a recovery plan with timetabled objectives. And we need to start with what we have, our critical assets, which is basically products, markets, facilities, and stock, people, and finances. And then we work through current impacts and future scenarios to something which is an actionable plan. And maybe some things we should prioritize and some things we should pro postpone and some things we should maybe put on the wish list. So that is the kind of, kind of the language that we say, something you can restart, something you probably have to re recover, and something you might have to revitalize. But don't start everything at the same time. Look at where your strategic niche is, what business activities still make a lot of sense. So that's the trust of this first module. Then the second module, which we have is, look, we say that ready to workplace. So make your workplaces safe to minimize the spread of COVID-19 and ensure machinery is working well and factory tied up. So there's basically two work streams here. So one is the COVID prevention and uh, preparedness, which is dealing with, okay, so we might have to do something in terms of health monitor, temperatures check before people enter, and we have to maintain safe distance of one, one and a half meter, avoid this contact transfer, so no touch screens and, and no uh, paperwork, no cash flow, those type of things, and then improve hygiene uh, in terms of personal hygiene that is there, hand washing and sanitation, and then also looking at personal protective equipment. And then we say that is not the full game. We need to also look at our operational preparedness because two months has, uh, has, has done something to our stocks and machinery. So we need to check and maintain machinery and then sort out, out our premises. Because if we are putting people at different work locations, we should also look at the workspace as being, uh, being friendly and productive again from a kind of a visual factory or a 5S type of approach. So that is the trust here. Then we go to startup and uh, startup, we would expect that, don't expect that all pieces of the jigsaw fall together again immediately. So you will have to do restart and de-bottleneck your business operations, basically by looking at operations, supply, sales, and workforce. And we dare also emphasize then the, the issue of building back teams that can do problem solving. Then the fourth one is saying, okay, now when, uh, once you have re-established the um, a manufacturing base, which is probably smaller than what you had before, you can see at bringing growth back to your business by what I would say doing things better or doing things differently. And so we have this, this whole idea of, of consolidate, get better at what you're already good at and diversify uh, where you're good at but could do for a different purpose. So, and then we think the business competencies could be in the areas of technology, of your products and your businesses. And I can't go through all the details, but just to give you a flavor, if you say then business doing better would be driving entrepreneurship, improving your forecasting, looking at your cash flows and managing those better and build empowered team. And if you say, uh, what do we do differently? 
then you could see uh, where do we need to to change ownership of our of our enterprise to enable to attract finances or resources resources to grow what are we what is our product and service strategy should we go from selling the product to some service delivery and how can we we'll, we'll improve our supply chain strategy so more the business improvements but still staying with your core competencies so grow on the base of your core competencies and then the fifth module which we have is the future proof and that's basic, basically dealing with how can we, we be better prepared for what for what ha just happened to us let's put it bluntly that way so think ahead and set your business up for continuity through uncertain and unfavorable times and uh, basically there are uh, what we see three elements one is the the traditional element of preparedness in it from a perspective of business continuity planning, and then we can also refer to the res respective ISO standards 22301 and related ones. But business continuity plan is always based on building back to what we had. So we were here, something happened, we want to get back to that. We produce 1,000 kilos of uh, biscuits a day, we want to go back to that. But it might it does not really deal with this unexpected change. So we need to be do also looking at more insight and foresight to, to have companies start to think a bit, uh, it, today, tomorrow might not be exactly the same of a continuation of today. So what is likely plausible? And then ultimately, there is also a very, quite a lot of talk that the, the strategies or the new future, the new normal will be different. So can we have some vision? Because if we have some vision on this, it will be much better to make strategic investment decisions. Where would we deploy our teams and so on? So that's the five steps that we have as, as a back to business roadmap. But as I said earlier on, we also want to say, let's look at specific inputs to drive business excellence. And you see here on the sides, you see these elements of entrepreneurship, uh, finance, customers, supply chain, operations manpower so we've also done some modules around this uh, so optimize your uh, workflows in terms of the manpower uh, Sorry, this is the wrong icon because this is operations. Uh, so, but I mean, this happens, a small business, small mistake there. But where we say, can you drive manufacturing excellence with lean manufacturing resource efficiency and bring in some low cost automation to improve your manufacturing? And just to show one more on entrepreneurship. So we say that entrepreneurship is typically about managing in uncertain times, taking risk, calculated risk and so on. So how can we grow this? Because there's a lot of uncertainty. It's not just about applying our planning and financial controls. It's also getting ahead in this. So we, we are using this framework from Empotech that has this achievement planning and power clusters to say, what do we need to change to prevent us from getting in the same situation back again? So that's the website. I will try to go then just to show the website. Maybe the videos won't work, but let's see whether I can at least show the website. So for people to see that, but then I have to stop share and then share again, different screen, isn't it? Yes. So, uh, so this is the website, how it looks. And then here you see, uh, basically, if I make it a bit smaller, you see the roadmap highlighted. And then you see, uh, if I go to ready to workplace, you get a short description and you get to the ready to workplace. And then you see here a short, uh, five, six minutes video, which explains the main items. And then you have uh, here uh, work uh, fact sheets and checklists. I don't know if I open this. Can you still see this? This is in. Can you yeah, see this? Open. Yeah, this will open it. Huh? So here you have a checklist. So I opened the checklist on COVID-19 preparedness and prevention. So here's that. What can you do on uh, health monitoring? What maintains uh, safe distance? What are some practical issues like stagger start and break times? Um, maximum extent stop physical workflows, uh, avoid options of seating and standing at work benches, conveyor belts and so on, opposite seating and so on. So these are just some uh, practical uh, ways that uh, uh, could be uh, done. So if I then go back, then you have also, uh, here you go then to some, you, you can see all the topics which are there. So this is this improvement. So if you go operations, you get to the operations module, you see also same approach there. And then there is some uh, mechanisms to, for getting involved and so on. So I won't speak too much about it. I think uh, we, we rather uh, discuss a little bit more. I just wanted to give this as a 
as an overview of what our thinking has been. And this has really been as a way to help MSME to think through how to restart, recover and revitalize business. Very, very important, you know, uh, for your information, in fact, the entire masterclass that we've been hosting in the last 30 days has been about reinvigorating and rebuilding businesses from whatever situation we are in. So this is entirely in its entirety in line with what we've been for stressing on specifically with entrepreneurs in India. Now, you know, uh, uh, you, you have a wide range of experiences around the world. Now, I'd like to ask you if you, we, we, we can, we can shut this off for now. Yeah, or you can just have this as a background. Okay, cool. Yes, yes. Uh, because, you know, it's anyway, uh, uh, you know, people have seen this, but, you know, uh, so we, we, we can be in the forefront. Uh, yes. If you look at, you know, the experience that you've had worldwide in dealing with uh, enterprises, what do you find particularly different in MSMEs or SMEs in India compared to where we were, uh, where uh, your experience is coming from Europe, Australia, all over the place, wherever you've been? Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's, it's a difficult question because there is so much variety in the MSME sector. And that is also a little bit of the challenge that we try to find one solution for uh, what is a six crores of M MSMEs or, uh, and, and it's not going to work. So we need to have some granularity in there. I think that uh, if I talk specifically about manufacturing, there's a lot of levels of of innovativeness and 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 and, and, and uh, initiative of manufacturing sectors, but there is a shortage of basically accessing to information. So, what is the best practice information on technology, markets, products? So that is a difficulty, and where you see that countries which are doing better or more productive in the MSME sector, they've all invested in making technology. Uh, knowledge on MSME sectors more freely available. So if you're a small operator in the in the middle of uh, Bihar or so, it is very difficult to get independent, trustworthy advice on which technology to take. So this idea of technology advice is very critical. And also in that context, the technology advice related to, um, to collaboration with the knowledge institution. So we see, uh, if I compare with the Netherlands or Australia, where I work, there's quite a lot of initiatives to get businesses, also small and medium-sized enterprise to work with, uh, with local technical institutes, ITIs, IITs, to work on solving innovation problems. And I think a third component where I see a, a little bit of a, a challenge is that uh, sometimes, and this don't take it offensive, but it seems like productivity thinking is not always there. So we always think that, okay, something goes to waste. Well, it's never a waste because I can sell it for a lower price. Somebody is going to buy it. But the basic assumption is that if I sell it for a lower price, I've lost money, even though I get money at cash flow. So that sense of of productivity as a mindset is, is still something that, that needs to be developed. And maybe it's also related to how the MSME segment has evolved over time. But I think some sectors are picking up more on this uh, uh, manufacturing competitiveness and productivity and innovation. Uh, uh, and other sectors are more traditional uh, uh, where, where some of this has still has to work. But I've, overall, we, we, we see in our work pre-COVID, I must say, that uh, many businesses will pick up on, uh, on kind of looking at lean manufacturing, uh, total productivity management, Kaizen 5S. There is opportunities left, right and center. And, and often at relatively low low cost. So if we have to to now create more space between people working in our factories and, and also put them a, a one, one person, one workstation, one shift kind of approach because we can't move people around, then we, we can use that as a way to also see is our workflow now efficient and are we not lifting the same thing three times before something productive is being done. So uh, I, I don't know whether that answers your, your question, but it gives maybe a bit of perspective that, yes. that we, we see productivity as a key driver and that will cut cost and that will help us to get out of a crisis. You know, in fact, I agree with you. Uh, you know, that leads to another question that I have. Unido's experience around the world when it comes to, um, you know, industry, what is the thing that you feel that we lack in terms of, let us say, resource, banking, finance, what, what do you think are the main uh, 
differentiators that we have where we are unable to reach out to this huge number of people that are primarily small and medium enterprises and they there there, there is a lag somewhere uh, that we, we we are still working on and trying to push them and propel them where, where do you think uh, is the is the issue yeah i think i think there is a bit of the what i was referring to on this productivity a bit of a, a manufacturing mindset to, to that needs to come in there so so the history of small industries in some cases has also been traders starting to manufacture and then there's not a kind of some some people have also commented on that we do manufacturing but we we don't teach manufacturing engineering or production engineering too much we teach it and finance and then we think we can manufacture and the the the, the art of of really manufacturing is still something that 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 could be added and I think the other factor, of course, is also that we have still a, a high degree of informality that uh, the MSME sector, particularly if you go more to the micro segment, uh, the, which, which sets the, uh, the Indian scene uh, aside. And, 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 and I mean, we cannot compare India to Japan. And we, we should look more at comparators uh, with, uh, within South, uh, South Asia or Southeast Asia as a reference point. So do, so do you primarily feel that Whenever we talk about, let us say, um, you know, industries in India, there was a time when we were constantly setting up a lot of these industrial estates and planted factories and so on and so forth. And now we've gone into a very different model. Uh, you know, I presume in the late 80s when Unido uh, started coming into India, there were lots of studies about how do you propel small and medium enterprises. So across the country, you had so many planted factories and whatnot and whatnot, which were coming up. And then all of a sudden now the cities are out of bounds for small enterprises. So you have to go somewhere deep outside because there's no more space left inside cities. And there are no more flatted factories being developed. So what is your um, uh, idea about this? Yeah, let me let me first correct you, Vito, because we didn't call in. You need to came to India in the '60s already, so we have had 50 years of service in in in, in India. Uh, but uh, that, that that's uh, that's not uh, to to the point. I think that, uh, and this is perhaps also an opportunity that we could see in this current scenario. So we have. Uh, we have uh, people, uh, migrant workers, who have gained experience in working in a manufacturing uh, context or in, a, in a, engaged, and they are returning to their home villages, not for the best reasons, let's be honest about that, but they, there is also an opportunity to see whether we can facilitate some entrepreneurship with some of the returning uh, migrants, so to speak, and see whether they can set up some, some industries. Because of course, the, 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 we, can't, we cannot all move to Bangalore and Pune and Hy Hyderabad, uh, it's, because that's just not gonna, gonna work. So I think that the UNIDA model is also more about, let's, let's look for clusters of manufacturing in, in, in a regional area, and maybe not every district, but at, at a, sub-state level uh, manufacturing hubs and, and, and make sure that we invest also in the connectivity down the road, uh, transport goods and services can come in and out. So is UNIDO planning in the near future to set up um, clusters wherein or flatted factories or areas or industrial areas where in rural areas where uh, there could be the state, the center, UNIDO, um, uh, all together setting up this cluster and populating it with industries. Is there anything on the of that sort on the cards? Um, I, I think UNIDO would not go into the building actually because we are a technical assistance provider, but we, we've been looking at more at the smaller scale uh, elements that was already ongoing pre-COVID for, for like northeastern states. So Assam, uh, Mizoram, Mizoram and so others have said, what could be industries, smaller scale industries, because you would obviously have the disadvantage of uh, the uh, call it remoteless, um, remoteness of the, the areas to see what industries can be developed there locally, but but I think in this now, this uh, post lockdown and changed migration patterns, there is a, a need to look at the kind of the secondary or tertiary sectors or cities to look at what we can do in, uh, in, in, in um, take uh, Lucknow, uh, Kanpur, Pune, Nashik, uh, those uh, those places. My geography is limited, but uh, so just to pick up some of the right names. <laughs> Yeah, but that's about my limit. Or I saw some of the other other places, Mysore, Vijavada, those some of those more 
second or third tier cities and, and see whether we, they can be converted into manufacturing hubs. And then we can also link that to, uh, to sort of the urbanization, more planned urbanization to plan uh, for workers' quarters, for uh, social housing, for uh, and do straight away the uh, sanitation in the right way and waste management. So we create also a bit of models for sustainable cities. Very correct. So I think maybe time is right for uh, Unido to get into something like this, and maybe we can we at India SME Forum can work together with one of the state governments and set up a model, uh, you know, uh, area like this, and then let them replicate it to various other places. Yes. Uh, very valid. So coming to the current status of MSMEs, what do you think are the concern areas, and uh, you know how what can be done, and what are, what are the issues that you feel are the areas of concern? when you are looking at MSMEs today in the current situation? Yeah, I, I, I mentioned it briefly in my uh, slides, the sort of areas of finance and the uncertainty and the, uh, the markets, uh, uh, manpower, uh, facilities and so on. So I, th I think if I put the, the finance a little bit at the side, I know that this is the highest on the agenda, but I, this is also not the area where, where you need to can, can make, make or break the game. I think that we are more looking at how can we create the best possible impact of a financial program that will come out. Because if, if finance comes out and it's just spread evenly, we will have less impact than if we target financing. So target financing it, it would be more useful. I think that from our perspective, we, we say that basically look at two things. So what is your business going to be like? So the, think ahead on where, where what is your... Uh, I mean, in your master classes, you discussed a few times this end, the essential, needed, the desirable, uh, avoidable. So, how is your product moved in that ladder? And can you position some of your products uh, back or forth higher into the, uh, the the needed categories? And and what is then your product strategy? So, what make make a plan, a business plan for recovery? And just don't say, I will, I will. I will start again where I stopped on the 20s of March in the evening, and I'll just pick up where I was, because that is not going to work. And we, we are concerned that if we talk to, uh, to, to many entrepreneurs, this is still very early stage for them to really think about this. And then the second part is that I would say prepare then also your workplace because there will be, there are uh, regulatory requirements there will be liabilities associated with making sure that you're not become a, 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 a hotspot for COVID. Uh, and, and if you become a hotspot, you're back at square one uh, because you will be closed for uh, some time and then it will be difficult. You will have a negative name. You, how will you get staff to come back after that situation? So it will be very important to manage this COVID crisis. But I would, would also say, and I had it also in the this, in this slide, at the same time, make also sure that you're operationally prepared. So there is there is uh, a back, uh, backlog of maintenance. There, is, there might have been the, uh, uh, some, uh, some materials might have deteriorated or decayed. Some cables might have gone wet or uh, rusted or other things or some valves might be blocked or whatever else. It is not difficult to imagine this. And we've, we've unfortunately seen that, that things can go wrong and will go wrong. So we say, don't just run for uh, the the COVID measures, but also make sure that you can start in a safe and reliable way again, because that is the only way that you will start making money again. Very correct. Uh, very, very correct. Thank you for that answer. You know, in fact, uh, I, I we have 722 people online today. So, okay. Uh, I'm already getting questions from various people, but I'm going to try and, you know, uh, while I'm, you know, talking to you, also look at the questions that we are getting. One of the other things that I that I uh, wish to ask you, you know, uh, back in Europe, for example, the the, the response to COVID and yes. the response to COVID in India, is, do you find a difference or, you know, uh, have we done it? We, we may have done it differently in your mind. And what is it that we have done different? And uh, what, what are the shortcomings today that we can still take care of? Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's, it's difficult to to compare exactly and also of course india is is as big or bigger than the whole of the european union for example so you can't compare the the response of india to the response of the netherlands or the uk because it's much 
bigger there. I think India was was much earlier in call, uh, calling for a complete uh, lockdown, a nationwide lockdown that that happened later at, at at the same time. But I must also say that the the, the COVID increased the, the when when it was in Europe, there was, it was one day there and the next day it was everywhere. So it was very interconnected. So there was not much time, whereas we have seen that India managed quite well in the early stages to, to uh, with the uh, travel restrictions and so on to, to keep it at, at bay. And then at a certain point in time, it became necessary to do this immediately, this, this action there. I think that in, in terms of the, the response plans in, in, in Europe and so on have very much focused on keeping people employed and so 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 helping entrepreneurs to to uh, to cover this the salary bills in one way or another by by some subsidy or or, or so so that has been the kind of rather than than get everybody on the social security uh, uh, ledger and the safety nets and 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 have a huge expenses there keep them in the productive uh, employment and then also allow enterprises to have kind of surplus labor for some period of time which can be invested in new innovations or, or can be invested in business uh, improvement initiatives and once business will pick up these people are needed again and if you if you uh, uh, dismiss them right now, in six months you might pull out your hair. That's that you you need this kind of people, and they would not be available. So that has been a, a strategy of very much focusing on uh, on the, uh, the the kind of keeping people in a, some kind of productive activity, even though it's at lower productivity levels right now. And then, of course, there's a lot of talk about uh, what what can we do with uh, public procurement, or basically creating demand that will be also necessary to create demand for products and services which then ultimately is taking over government subsidies so creating demand in terms of uh, bringing forward some infrastructure projects or bringing forward some renewable energy projects and you could say maybe india could also look at this from from uh, from uh, investing or, or div diversifying the support from just being on the in the social sector and the, the safety nets uh, uh, area to to creating a demand or a procure projects on uh, maybe on on food safety on uh, on uh, sanitation in the big cities on urban housing on or maybe uh, public transport, even though public transport, of course, will also have to be rethought if you have to maintain this uh, five, six feet uh, economy. So, so, so that could be some some lessons to to learn to see how how can we keep people in the uh, in the MSME or in the in, in in any form of employment, and how can we create demand again? Because demand ultimately will then be uh, the the reason that business can employ people and will keep the economy going. Thank you. Uh, I have a question here from uh, Firoz Sheikh who asks, uh, how is Unido currently supporting MSMEs in this scenario? Um, I mean, we, we have some ongoing projects. I, I did not uh, talk so much about this, but uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, we are a technical cooperation agency. We have uh, uh, quite some work with the MSME sector on energy efficiency, where we, uh, where we basically work with I think something like 30 clusters around the country, which are energy intensive, work with Bureau of Energy Efficiency and the DC's office, uh, DC MSME office. And we, 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 with our expert team, we do energy audits, we give advice on energy savings and so on. And if we, we think that with energy, measure, energy measures, typically uh, energy costs can be reduced by at least 20, 15, 20% quite easily with low cost investment. So this is a, a way that can be uh, headed out and we are, we are continuing that, that work in the different clusters. But of course, we are a little bit hampered, of course, by the lockdown that we cannot uh, actually engage in those, those areas. We are also working on the, on the and, and you are aware of, you know, that we are also working quite extensively on the, in the startup domain to fast track innovations on the, on the low carbon side, but we can also extend that to other areas. So to run challenges and then help uh, innovators to come forward with, uh, with solutions and help them to introduce and practice pilot and, and deploy those in industrial setups so uh, like uh, waste heat recovery or alternative uh, cooling for uh, uh, refrigerated trucks for co coal transport uh, and delivery and th those kind of things so our work is is more on the technical cooperation capacity building technical advice and so on oh, 
you know, there's another term which comes to my mind when everybody is currently talking about uh, around the world, which is the new normal. Now, everybody is talking about that uh, it may not be even possible to go back to a pre-COVID area ever, you know, because we've learned a lot of lessons in the past so many days. And we're talking about whether it's even going to be possible to get back to pre the pre-COVID area where there was everybody was not even worried about sanitization or cleanliness of what people do or washing hands. I mean, so, so many things. But now, what do you think? You know, will we get back to that pre-COVID era? And is, is it possible or is it even desirable? I, I, th I think I, th I think it's probably not desirable because we obviously did not foresee that we came into a situation which, which we call a crisis now. So it's probably not desirable that we go exactly back there. And I also doubt whether it's indeed possible that, that, that we've all um, learned a hard lesson, so to speak, that, that things can go wrong and that there is a real risk. We, we always said that oh, this is so such a small risk, it won't happen in our lifetime. Well, it happened in the in the, the third uh, decennium of the 21st century, which is only five months old, so it already happened. So we, it's, so so it will be different, and I think that uh, I mean uh, uh, that there will uh, what what we see happening is that there will be more pressure on the. Uh, on more decentralized work, so so you can't have the same number of people in this in the, in the, in a in a confined, flattened uh, uh, factory as you were saying. You can't have where previously you could have maybe hundred people stitching uh, jeans. Uh, that will in the future only be possible have 40, 50 maybe if you're. So so there will be some issues, and that will also relate back to some processes which are more automated. So because many processes then have still the the loading and unloading done manually, and that will 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 have some some constraints there. So I think the the labor intensity, labor productivity will have to come up to to deal with the post COVID situation, and and automation, low cost automation might have to play a role in that. Uh, but as uh, on the on the other hand, also low cost automation, and then alt moving on to Industry 4.0, also offered an opportunity for more diversified uh, uh, products. I think the other one uh, component which, which is there that we have been, even before COVID hit India, we also had uh, uh, problems in, 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 in the pharma industry and in the automotive sectors with components not coming out of, or ingredients not coming out of, of China and other places. So there is also a sense that we, we, are, we, have, we have driven this efficiency and just in time delivery to the, to the absolute perfection and we made it a holy grail. And I think that that will also lower down. There will be other values to say that, uh, okay, what is resilience in value change? And can we can we create resilience, alternative supplies? And even though from a pure economics perspective, that might not pay off in the short term, but it will certainly help in the kind of the things that we were discussing earlier on, on, on how can we set ourselves and buffer uh, to future events. I have another question, you know, relating to 4.0, Industry 4.0. Somebody's asking, what are the challenges that, in, you know, we've been all talking about Industry 4.0 for almost two years now. And uh, what are the challenges that you feel are uh, in implementation of 4.0? Would it also lead to unemployment? Um, I, I, I think uh, th th this will be uh, really a challenge. And there has been some studies done uh, for India and also for, uh, for other sector, for other countries that, that there is employment at risk in some sectors, in particular uh, uh, garmenting, for example, would be a sector that could be potentially uh, very badly affected in that sense. But I think there is also the opportunity for for uh, larger diversification. So in our in our view, it will be it will be something which is which is changing the the, the job profiles that we have. We might need more people in design and engineering and and the customization, custom services, and so on. And the jury is out on whether that will be a net positive or net negative. But what what we uh, Unido did uh, its uh, flagship program report every two year we do an industrial development report, and the la the one which came out just before Christmas is an industrializing industrializing in the digital age. So we had quite extensive uh, uh, discussion globally on this, and and what what it comes and and I've I've gone on record to say that we need to find uh, the. Um, industry 4.0 made in India way. So we need to, we, we can't, 
we can't, so to speak, uh, copy and paste what Japan or Germany did. We need to find a way that 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 suits uh, the Indian scenario. And some elements are necessary that we put more emphasis on IP connect, uh, um, protection, that we, we have data security, that we, we, we also look at uh, the kind of productivity. So you can only do Industry 4.0 productively if you have already sorted out your manufacturing process. So we still need these core competencies in manufacturing and so on. Um, but I mean, I mean it, there's many. It's actually also interesting because Industry 4.0 is in part enabled by the software industry in India. So that that that, that some of the international companies which are uh, benefiting most from the uh, from the Industry 4.0, they rely on on some of the work being done in India. So that should be an opportunity to 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 work at this. And uh, separate from the COVID scenario, we Unido was already uh, trying to see whether what we can do in the in the areas of innovation. Industry 4.0 is the uh, with the um, uh, out, India automation. Uh, Automation Association and with the uh, DPIIT and the DHI Department of Heavy Industry. There's, there's uh, two connected questions I have from two different people. There's Daoud Siddiqui is asking, can Unido provide any direct or indirect financial assistance to MSMEs? And we have Nina Narayan who's asking, we are an initiative for sanitation and hygiene towards all. Uh, thank you, Rene and Vinod for such an inspiring guidance. Please let us know if there are any UNIDO initiatives for helping women entrepreneurs. So one is um, asking about whether the, you, are, you are helping in finance uh, in any direct or indirect way. And the second is asking about specifically for women. Uh, the, the, the first question is basically no. We, we don't have a, a financial arm. So we are not like the World Bank or ADB or IFC in a sense that, that we, we are a banker or so. But we, we do in, uh, in, in different countries collaborate with the international financial institutions that we help them to, to, to set up schemes and design schemes which are better benefiting the MSME segment. But we are not a financial institution. So that, that, that is the, the case. We, uh, at the moment, we don't have a specific program on women entrepreneurship in India, but this is certainly also an, an area of interest globally where we've uh, done quite a lot of work on the uh, women entrepreneurship training in, in the um, uh, Arab countries, for example, that comes to mind. We had, uh, uh, I was myself earlier involved for UNIDO in, in Vietnam in the handicrafts industries where, where to, to help productivity there. And that was also a lot of the basically village women uh, taking this as an additional job and so on. So in principle, we have the competence and we, we have the ability, but we have not had a, a specific project on this in India, but we would be very interested and I'll also work with our UN partners like UN Women and UNDP, which have some programs in this area. Yes. Excellent. You know, I have another question here. Uh, but before that, you know, uh, uh, I don't know whether we, we discussed last time on uh, at the launch of B3C that, you know, it is, and our chairman has told us, why don't we look at setting up a bank? Because it's very difficult to find money actually to get down the, uh, the pyramid to the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah. And what are, what are your, uh, uh, you know, ideas about what sort of, uh, banking system changes do we need and what sort of um, uh, support can you provide if the MSMEs get together to set up a cooperative of sorts for banking primarily and uh, financing? Yeah, we've, we, we've done some work on that in the, in the past, the UNIDO, but not in India. And I'm also not the, uh, fully uh, into this, but I think, I think the whole thing is that 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 the, uh, in, in terms of MSMEs, so I should have mentioned that the 10 minutes ago when you asked where's different, so there, there's still a kind of a lot of friends and neighbors financing MSMEs. So we haven't set up the, the pool, the proper financial system for the MSME segment. And the, the more you go to the micro segment, the, the larger the share is of, uh, call it informal or, or personal finance, which is in there. And, and often this is not necessarily, if you look at it from a, from a financial analysis perspective, not the best way, but this is how people have felt comfortable to develop their, their business. So I think that a, a, a more effort is needed on, on, on education and developing banking products 
which which are attractive to MSME operators, and they're doing that basically for for the banks, the the uh, the CBs and the others of the world, uh, who to to really work on their risk portfolios. Because if you have larger numbers of MSMEs, uh, then then of course some will fail, and you will have some defaulting. But if you have a portfolio, you can manage that, and that's how MSME finance is done globally. So we somehow need to come to that uh, that issue that we can also maybe look more at the. Uh, at the uh, cash flow finance rather than than assets and 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 so on, and actually in the B3C uh, we have also one module which is drilling down a little bit on those initiatives. But it might also m mean that we look at look at the ownership or structure of the MSMEs so that there is a, a way to 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 attract investment. So we should also be an attractive investment destination. Absolutely, you know, very very key points that you mentioned in today's uh, session. You know, and I, I am going to definitely go th go through this entire video, which is going to be on our Facebook uh, videos page. So I'm going to go through it and note down each of the points that you said. You know, a lot of uh, significant things that you talked about, especially, you know, the sort of work that you can do with women. You see, we have 7,000 plus women members, you know, uh, uh, in the SME forum. And the sort of work that we've been doing with various states, including uh, Gujarat, including Andhra Pradesh, wherein they've been talking about development specifically for industries in remote areas on major highways and so on and so forth. And also the current uh, MSME minister, Mr. Gadkari, who is known for you know uh, uh, radical thought, uh, is also talking about setting up industries in uh, you know uh, on, on major highways around them so that you know people don't have to come to very major cities because there's yes. nothing left here. You see, uh, and uh, labor should be able to go nearby and work there rather than coming all the way out to any other place. So very, very important things that you told today. And we are going to uh, follow up with you for a lot of stuff. We work together any which way. So uh, there is going to be a lot more that we will do. Uh, we've almost come to the end of the time. Uh, I would like any last words that you have specifically for our participants. We went to 1,200 people. Uh, uh -huh. so. <laughs> okay, then that's that's quite a good number. <laughs> no, I I I think that there's different things. So so it's, I and I've also said it on other occasions. There are certain weaknesses in the MSME segment, and that we we all knew, and that is sort of, if I may say so, they sort of the boiled over now with the crisis. So we can say we want to go back, but we should also, I, I think, as a, as, a, as a final consideration, think about how can we use this crisis as an opportunity to pick up things in a better way and, and talk about moving forward, moving forward with the social agenda, the environmental agenda, but also the productivity agenda. And if we are more productive and as, as, a, as, as a nation, it will also become more attractive as an investment destination for some foreign investors to, who might, of course, also want to diversify and redirect some of their global value chains. So I think that let, let us take this as a, as, let's not just uh, hide under the table and say, I want to do what I did uh, three months ago or four months ago, but let's take this up with an open mind. And I think you were also there last week when Suez Prabhu said the, 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 the lockdown has locked us down physically, but hasn't prevented us from thinking outside of the box. So let us let us take that thought. We, we are constrained in terms of movement of goods and people and what we can do. So the old system will not necessarily fall again nicely into uh, into the jigsaw as it used to be, but let us be open to that and embrace change. So the only normal for the future will be change. Amazing, amazing words, you know, very inspirational words, very inspirational session. That's how most people have reacted also. So uh, thank you very much, Rene, for being here. Let me also share with you and all our friends that the initiative of uh, the Asian Center for uh, uh, economic and entrepreneurial development and education of India SME Forum is underway. We've already worked with, started working with the National Institute of Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises uh, to be able to offer to all of you courses, short-term courses, fast-track courses, immersive courses, wherein we will be able to offer all of you uh, a certain amount of best practices from around the world. 
uh, in association with the Ministry of MSME and everything online. So you don't have to leave out of your house to attend any of them and there'll be a certificate course, uh, certificate from uh, the uh, National Institute of Micro, Small, Medium Enterprises for all of you. So do join in again in the next session. Till then, thank you very much. Stay safe and keep on hoping for better days. You know, we have better days ahead. This is not going to end the way it has. I mean, as of now, it's not ended. We are still alive and we are doing a lot of stuff in the future. So thank you very much and a good night to everybody. Good night to you, Rene, too. Thank you very much.